Welcome to Follow Your Joy Podcast, where intuition is the doorway to your wisdom, your genius, and your joy. I'm your host, Marla Diane, and I've been transforming creative entrepreneurs' lives for over 26 years. Through two businesses as a success coach and a business strategist, and prior to that, an entertainment publicist and a talent manager for two decades. It's time to make joy your inner GPS for life and business decisions rather than lean on your logic and reason first. You'll not only be following what is most authentic to you and for you, but you will live the beautiful life that's meant just for you. We'll come to learn that following your joy is a life and a business strategy. Listen in for inspiring entrepreneurial stories and solo casts that illuminate how by trusting your intuition, you'll create a fulfilling result. Want to learn how to access, trust, or up-level your intuition? Join me in the conversation to find out how. Well, hello, creatives. It is almost, in fact, uh, one day away from December. Oh, my goodness. Do you love Italy as much as I do? It's been a few decades that I've had this kind of innate love and attraction to its culture and its people and food and products and architecture and history and especially the quality lifestyle. I mean, who doesn't love the romance of Italy? It's truly a magical country and it's transformational, by the way. You go for at least a few weeks, right? Or a month, like I did uh, in uh, 2017, I went to Florence, and that changed every part of who I was. It was a long-awaited work-live experience where I brought my coaching business, right, via laptop and WhatsApp, and had the time of my life. Currently, I just got back from a two-week dreamy vacation to Rome and the Amalfi Coast in late September early October, where I had the privilege of touring the famous iconic perfume factory of Cartusia. Are you familiar with the brand? It's a rich history based on, as in, started on the Isle of Capri, the beautiful Isle of Capri. So here's some fun facts. The Cartusia legend recounts that in 1380, the father of the Cartusian monastery of St. James, taken by surprise by the news, excuse me, the news of Queen Joan of, see if I pronounce this right, Anjou, coming to Capri, picked a bouquet of the most beautiful flowers for her. These remained in the same water for three days. And as he went to go throw them out, the water, that is, he noticed that it had acquired a mysterious fragrance. So he turned to the friar, specializing in alchemy, who traced the origin of the scent, and that water became the first perfume of Capri. And the history tells that in 1948, one of the royalty members of the Charter House which by the way is a, a mansion for wealthy noblemen and a refuge for royalty, found the old perfume, excuse me, perfume formula. And with the permission of the Pope, it's a great history, I love this, revealed them to a chemist from Piemont in the northern part of Italy, and thus created the smallest perfume laboratory in the world and called it Cartusia. <laughs> And that happens to be, and it means charter house, named after obviously this, uh, you know, uh, elite group, elite mansion of uh, royalty, is that that then is how Cartusia brand came to be. Beautiful, beautiful perfume. I don't know if you have heard of it, but I highly recommend it. We'll tell you where to go find it in just a few minutes. Um, but Love it. <laughs> so I bring all this up because of my next guest, Amy Parsons. She's co-founder and CEO of Mozza Fiato, an online marketplace representing and working exclusively with Italian brands in the beauty, fragrance, and men's rooming space. She founded Mozza Fiato in 2020 
which she will share behind the scenes story how that all came to be. Her company works with two dozen Italian companies importing their products to the U.S. and selling e-commerce through e-commerce channels. Mozzafiato is Amy's first entrepreneurial venture following a 20-year career as an executive in higher education and as a practicing attorney. She lives in Colorado with her husband and two daughters. And how did we come together? Well, <laughs> in late 2020, early 2021, I found her feature article in an Italian lifestyle magazine called Dream of Italy, mm -hmm. produced by Kathy McCabe. She's the producer of the award-winning travel publication, membership uh, page or membership site, I should say, podcast and PBS television series of the same name. So soon as I read that article, I inquired about being an affiliate, right? Since Mozzafiato in its essence matched so well with my passion for Italy, as well as my rebranding I was doing at the time for my coaching business. So through my affiliate brand relationship that eventually came to be, I was able to set up that tour of the famous perfume factory, Cartusia, while I was in Capri, Italy, back in October and September. So Amy, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Marla. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me. Yes. Oh my gosh. Always, always a pleasure. Yeah. I'm so jealous of your trip to Capri. Oh. <laughs> Capri, my gosh. And the coast, it sounds amazing. It was. It really, I mean, it's everything and more that you see, you know, and hear. It's uh, it's pretty magical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just yeah. no place like it in the world. Give, you know, the listeners a glimpse of your story on how Mozzafiato came to be. Yeah, gosh. Um, like you said, we created the company and launched it during the pandemic, um, right during the the height of when everybody was home in 2020. And I, as you said, had been 16 years as a higher education executive um, with Colorado State University. And in that role, I got to travel to a lot of different countries around the world and really found that I love finding homegrown niche brands in countries that I would travel to. Companies like Cartusia, like you mentioned, who has been perfecting their craft for hundreds of years, have um, really unique stories and backgrounds and products that you don't find anywhere else. So that was just a hobby of mine. That was just a passion interest that I would find, especially beauty brands and fragrances from places that I would visit. And I was fortunate to visit Italy a few times in there as well. And like you said, there's really no place like Italy. And in a way, it's it's really the birthplace of a lot of beauty brands because the country is so diverse from top to bottom. The ingredients are amazing. The country of Italy is just known for craftsmanship and for families who generation over generation perfect their craft and create these amazing products. And for some of these companies, they stay in the family for, you know, decades, even sometimes centuries. So, you know, I, I had always had the idea in my head that these amazing brands in Italy deserve more attention in the U S they deserve to come to American audiences and for us to, um, you know, for Americans to discover them because a lot of them you don't find unless you're, you stumble on them in their store in Florence or Capri or other places. They're not very well known in the U.S., even though they're these incredible brands and products. So that idea had just been percolating in my head um, for some time. And then um, over the years, I became friends with um, another entrepreneur who he is an Italian guy by heritage and likes to invest in Italian companies, not necessarily in the beauty space, but he's already um, investing in Italy and doing business over there. So it was really when, must have been 2020, when we were, everybody was home with the pandemic and we just sort of had the time because everybody was home to start really thinking about what this company would look like and combining 
my idea for a multi-brand marketplace with these incredible Italian brands and importing to them to the U.S. combined with, you know, his entrepreneurial experience and love of Italy and wanting to invest in more of these Italian brands. And we just iterated it for a few months and started reaching out to brands in Italy to see if they would be interested in expanding into this market. Uh, we worked with the Italian Trade Commission, who were very helpful to us and saying, you know, these are companies we work with in Italy that we think are ready to uh, come to the U.S. or expand further into the U.S. if they're already here. So one by one, we started going after, you know, the the top brands that we wanted to bring in, all niche brands. Cartusia was one of the first ones. Um, and one by one, they all said, yes, we think it's a great idea to have an all Italian marketplace, um, one that really told their stories and was a high quality brand, a high quality store that really stayed true to that Italian quality and and story and heritage that we were going after. So we started piecing it together. And by the end of 2020, we thought we really have something here. Um, And so I quit my job um, with the university at that point and we launched the company and the website went live November, first of 2020. So we just had our two year anniversary of the store just um, earlier this month. So happy anniversary, happy birthday, whatever you call it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Wonderful. Yeah. It's really, I mean, I call these, you know, pandemic born businesses um, because, you know, we, we all had such, um, large amounts of time, you know, Mm -hmm. to really rethink our lives. I'm duly impressed with, you know, how you took your passion for Italy and then some potential entrepreneurial, you know, dreams of yours Mm -hmm. and you put them together and you created this. And I just, like I said, it's, I loved it the first time I looked at it. You know, I, I, I love the essence of it. And that's what I was looking for, which I know that's what all of your uh, customers experience is there's this essence. It's like a, a story driven brand, you know, mm-hmm. very much a story driven brand <clears throat> where it's not difficult to create stories around because yeah. of obviously um, Italy itself and then all the heritage brands in their stories, Mm-hmm. Right. So it's, that's it's, really true. Yeah. And we've, we've added um, a lot of new brands over the last two years. We just launched another brand this week. And mm-hmm. the one that we just launched is called Mondial, M-O-N-D-I-A-L 1908. And it's from Florence. And if you're in Florence and you go on to the, the other side of the Ponte Vecchio, mm-hmm. they have a beautiful barber shop there. And that's where they have been making their products and and using them in grooming rituals for men for, you know, since 1908. And, and there's just so many of them that have those stories. And what we found too, Marla, is I've been so pleasantly surprised at how many wonderful men's brands there are. Mm. I think Italy is really kind of a birthplace of men's fashion and grooming and style mm. and the barbershop culture. And we just keep finding more and more of these incredible men's brands, yeah. bringing them to the U S and the men here love them. Once they discover a heritage brand that they love, then that's what they use. So the, the men's aspect of it wasn't something when we launched the company, I was more focused on women sure. um, and fragrance and skincare. And we had some men, but the men's category has been the one that we've just grown and grown and grown and grown. I think um, men are really drawn to the Italian style and that mm. heritage and those products. And so that's been a really nice surprise. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a, what I see it as a luxury, um, luxury products at, at affordable prices. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, when, when you tend to think about, you know, Italian brands, it is luxury. You know, we, mm-hmm. I think we as Americans know it's very quality products, quality leather, quality, mm-hmm. you know, fill in the blank, br- excuse me, fill in the blank. And um, I love hearing this about the men's grooming <laughs> products 
mm-hmm. that our you know American men absolutely it's like they want to they want to feel good smell good you know look good mm-hmm. as well <laughs> with these luxury brands so yeah, yeah. that's that's terrific so talk about um, since obviously the theme you know, the podcast is follow your joy is what brings you joy in the work that you do. And I'm sure you have a long list (laughs) given what we've just talked about, but yeah, what's, what would you say is your, what brings you the most joy in what you're doing? Yeah, it's a pretty joyful business that we're in (laughs) because we're, we're working with really beautiful products and, um, you know, bringing people joy. I love when customers email with questions or they, they email and say, I, I found this brand when I was in Italy. Do you have it? Can you get it? And working one-on-one with people to get them the things that they really love is really fun. But I think, I think my favorite part, Marla, is the friendships that I've made with our brand partners in Italy. Mm-hmm. They are such interesting, wonderful, creative uh, people, I think you mentioned at the top of the podcast, what a great lifestyle, you know, just how much they embrace beauty and and lifestyle in Italy and our brand partners in Italy are really that. And so working with them um, in the first year because of the pandemic, I just really got to know them all over Zoom. Mm-hmm. Um, but once I could travel to Italy again, and I was there for, for some time over the summer and got to meet with our partners one-on-one. And they're just the most remarkable people, all in their own way, all really dedicated to what they do, their own inspiration and artistry of what they bring together. Mm-hmm. I um I was in Florence in the summer with Lorenzo Villarese, who's a world famous perfumer, and his perfume shop is is there in Florence, mm-hmm. and he toured me of his perfume um, shop, which is part of his home, and he has a fragrance mm-hmm. museum and. Mm-hmm. And his work is incredible. And to see them actually at work and they'll bring you in to their homes and factories and show you what they're creating and Mm -hmm. where their inspiration comes from. And they've just been some of the most remarkable people I've ever met in my life. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's a privilege to know them and to work with them and to um, do business with them and bring their products here to a new audience. So Mm -hmm. um, people here can discover them and how wonderful they are. So that's the most joyful thing to me is just the personal connection with the people behind these brands. And, um, you know, it's, it's just been a joy to, to launch the company with them and then get to know them personally one-on-one when I'm working over there. Yeah. No, like I said, I'm sure the list is long. I mean, what's there not to be joyful about what you do, you know, (laughs) what you represent, And especially what you've just pointed out, I mean, just to be able to meet the people, you know, really get to understand and learn the culture and learn the heritage. Mm -hmm. Uh, To me, that's just, yeah, it's, it's yummy. (laughs) It's just, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they, they, um, you know, they're all working at their craft and improving it and innovating and, um, one of our brands is called Antica Barbieri Cola, and it's this tiny little barber shop on a side alley in Milan. The woman who runs it, Francesca, her father started the barber shop, and she's been part of the barber shop her entire life. And the barbers in there have been there since they're teenagers, mm-hmm. um, and they're in their fifties now. And and you know the the heritage and the tradition that they carry out day to day for their customers in these places is I've never seen anything like it. And it's a privilege to be there and to sit with them and to do business and to get to know them. Mm. Um, So I don't think I will, I will ever not feel joyful about the Italians who we get to work with. (laughs) Yeah, No kidding. Oh boy. Do I hear that? I'm curious how has Oh, how has it changed for you personally and, and professionally, but probably more personally, how has it changed for you from the, your prior career to being an entrepreneur? Yeah. I mean, I think when I was um, in the university system, there was a lot of innovating and launching of new things that I did in that role. I, you know, launched a new campus in Mexico, for example, and, you know, we build new things and new programs. And so it was a, 
a really important time for me to learn those skills of creation, of creating new um, new programs, new campuses, new things like that, um, and what it really takes around launching big projects from scratch. Now, you're in an environment that has a lot of resources and and people and, and those types of things, mm-hmm. but every job that you have, I think, helps prepare you for the next one. And so even when I was doing something that was, you know, chief operating officer for a university, you think, oh, that doesn't have anything to do with launching a company and, you know, in the Italian beauty and grooming space. But in my mind, it really does. Um, It was just sort of a a flow through and that I'm, um, you know, learning how to be an executive. I'm learning how to launch things, how to manage budgets, how to hire and manage people and, Mm -hmm. and bring projects from conception all the way to ground. And so launching the company really drew on a lot of that experience and skills that I had um, as a university executive all that time. So, you know, the big difference is you, you really are starting from true scratch. I hired every employee that we had, every contractor that we had, you know, (laughs) everything you start from scratch, Mm -hmm. um, the, the name, the intellectual property, the, the website, everything is created from scratch. That is a challenge. It's also can be very gratifying when you see the fruits of your labor start to pay off, because as you know, in this, in this business, um, every success or failure is on you, right? I mean, it's True. right there. You yeah. know, every day how well you're doing. And if something's not working, that's your fault. Um, if something is working, that's very gratifying. And so it's um, it feels, you know, more more pressure from that standpoint, right? Because it's all you. You've got to make it work and you don't have a choice. Failure is not an option. So from that standpoint, you know, there's a lot more pressure and some more reward as well. Yeah. But what I did in all those years leading up to it, I really feel like helped prepare me to launch the company. Nice. Yeah. I like that. I didn't think about that and knowing your, your background. So that was, for me, that was very helpful. And I agree. It, it was like the perfect segue. Yeah. You know, you, you, you only know in retrospect, right, Marla, like yeah. why, why you're doing the jobs that you're doing. Um, And looking back, I can see, yeah, I didn't know it at the time, but working in private practice really helped prepare me for Mm -hmm. being in-house legal counsel Mm -hmm. at the university. And I didn't know it at the time, but being Mm -hmm. in-house legal counsel helped prepare me to be chief operating officer. And then that helped prepare and that helped prepare me to be CEO of this business and launch the company. Um, you kind of only see that path in retrospect, but it's mm-hmm. always a path, right? Even if you don't know exactly where it's leading. And mm-hmm. I'm sure what I'm doing now, what you're doing now is is preparing us for what's next. And we don't know what that is, That's right. um, but we're always expanding and evolving right, right into the next thing. Oh yeah. That's, that's a hundred percent of my world as, you know, as a coach with using a lot of, you know, universal law principles and mm-hmm leaning back and receiving and letting go and uh, so much control and, and meaning not expecting things to happen in a certain way in a certain time frame. Do you need to have goals? Do you need to have some sort of idea? Of course. But how, <clears throat> what I say is know where you want to land, but how you get there is none of your business. <laughs> How you, how you get there, it can look a myriad of ways to arrive mm-hmm. at that, you know, if, if you will, end goal or our vision, because that's the whole, in, in my world, the entrepreneurial journey is that is who you become along the way. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Yep, so, I agree. Yeah, I agree so, with that. Yep. Yeah, very, very good. So, mm-hmm. all right. And intuition is is big in this world here too of, of follow your joy. So share um yeah, share a story where you followed your intuition, right? That ended in, you know, a very rewarding, fulfilling result. Hmm. Yeah, I do think that I always had the intuition, even when I was in the university system, Mm -hmm. that I was probably headed somewhere else. (laughs) And the reason that I I knew that sometimes, Marla, was 
um, you know, you pay attention to the things that you listen to on podcasts or the books that you read when you have your spare time. Mm -hmm. And I was always listening to entrepreneurial podcasts (laughs) just because I was, it was what I was interested in listening to in the car on, on the way to work. Um, or I was listening to podcasts about um, beauty companies and new innovation and travel and, and things like that. So um, while you're doing your your job every day, I think, you know, your intuition is telling you if you've got a half an hour to yourself and nobody else is in the car, what do you what lights you up? What ones are you clicking on? What are you listening to? Um, and I realized every time I went to those types of things. Um, and so that's telling me something else is going to open up over here. And this is sort of leading me in that direction. And then it really was when the pandemic hit, uh, and we're home and my partner started saying, Hey, since we're all home and have a little bit of time, let's just start exploring it. Why not? You know, let's spend a couple extra hours kicking the tires on this and Mm -hmm. seeing where we go. And I think that's why I've probably been listening to all those podcasts. (laughs) (laughs) That is That's why I'm reading Fast Company at night about different people's <laughs> entrepreneurial stories um, is to get ready for, for this. That's so right. That's I right. think listening to that when you're all by yourself and have a choice of what to read on the airplane or listen to in the car, where do you go? What where do you do? do? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a terrific example because I, I have a phrase that I use often um, called success leaves clues. And it has to do with the intuition. If you're tuned mm-hmm. into your intuition and you do proactively ask it, okay, instead of going to logic, instead of going to reason, instead of going, if you will, to your to your head, that you literally ask your intuition, right? what should I be doing at this point? Or should I do this? Or what, whatever that question is, instead of, again, going first to your your logic and your um, reason. And success Mm -hmm. leaves clues means that whether you realize it or not, like your example, uh, wow, all right. If I really put all the, you know, connected all the dots, no wonder I loved listening to those podcasts. No wonder those really lit me up in the beauty, Mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, products and so forth. Mm -hmm. So yeah, terrific example. Yeah. <laughs> Listening. Yeah. yeah. And look, look where I, it led you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think, I think too, Marla, to your point about intuition for me, it's also, I think a journey about, you know, where you have your own really positive energy, which is probably the same thing, right. As intuition, but when you feel so excited about okay. something, yep. that's a clue to success. That's where you're going to find the success. Whereas I used to think, well, if I just work hard enough and harder and harder and harder and harder and harder and force it, I'll automatically, you know, force the success, which sometimes that'll get you part of the way there. Mm -hmm. But when you can find the thing where you've got the high energy and the hard work and the high energy and, the, you know, positivity and the hard work, then you're going to speed your way there. That's right. That's perfect. And that's exactly the premise of follow your joy. So follow your joy is a life and a business strategy. It's not just a good feeling Mm -hmm. is that when you, excuse me, when you follow that joy. It's the, it's your intuition going, keep going there, keep going there, keep doing that. Mm -hmm. Right. Instead of, Oh, I'm feeling joyful and so forth and whatever. So (laughs) yeah, you, you really hit it, hit it on the, you know, nail on the head with that. Based on then your, you know, vast, you know, decades of experience, you know, one thing leading to the next, to the next, What's a tip, one tip of advice that you want to give our creatives that are listening? Mm, I would say stay focused on the big picture Mm -hmm. if you can and not let a day-to-day struggle or challenge derail you too much. Because in this business, at least in mine, we're in e-commerce, we're in sales. We know exactly how we're doing every day um, to some extent. And so if you have a great day, you can tend to think, Ah, we're amazing. We're on this great trajectory. If you have a bad day, you think, what are we doing wrong? <laughs> Those days are are indicators, but it's not the big picture. Look at the big trends. Look at the overall direction mm. um, to really understand where you're going and not to get too bogged down in those points. Those points are telling you something, mm-hmm. but it's not the end all and be all. You look at the accumulation, you know, the accumulation of what all those things are telling you mm-hmm. to tell you what direction to go in next. I think it's easy 
if you hit a little slump to really feel like, oh, I don't know where the bottom is. This is just a downward trajectory. And then your energy is going down and then it's just a cycle of Mm -hmm. going down. Whereas if you see it as, all right, I'm grateful for this because this is telling me something um, about the business that's not working. And so that allows me to pivot. So we're going up with it, right? Um, So it's really in that that perspective when you're in the day-to-day grind of starting a new business because every peak and valley can really feel exaggerated. Yeah. Um, in the first couple of years. That's for sure. It can, it can definitely detour you, mm-hmm. you know, if you, if you allow it. So very wise advice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very, very wise yeah. advice. Good. All right. So where can our listeners get in touch with you and what kind of special, you know, offers are you going to be, if, if, you know, having for the holidays? Yeah. So, um, our website is mozzafiato.com. It's M O Z Z A F I A T O.com. And on social, we are at I am mozzafiato on Facebook and on Instagram. We have a, a private Facebook group called Beauty with Italian Soul. We do a ton of giveaways and contests and stuff in the Facebook group. It's really fun. So, yeah, coming into the holidays, we have a lot of new products coming in. First of all, we have Um, a boat on the water right now, literally on the water right now that we'll have in our warehouse in another couple of weeks. And so we'll be flush with just so many new, beautiful products for the holidays. We can't wait. Um, A couple of our brands already came in this week. So we're going to be fully stocked with new brands and new products coming into the holidays. We do 10% off everybody's first order. So you can go in there and take a look and follow us through the holidays. We'll be doing a lot of giveaways and certain promotions on categories like fragrance and whatnot, all leading right up to uh, Christmas and New Year's. So it's going to be a really busy time. Uh, Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing a lot of giveaways on Instagram and inside the Facebook group from now Mm -hmm. until Christmas. Yeah. So can anybody, you know, request to join the Facebook group? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Anybody can. And and we'll let you in and be be part of the part of the fun in there. Okay. It's a really great group, and people post pictures um, from their trips to Italy and mm-hmm. and share tips and nice. things they like. And yeah. Um, yeah, so we'd love to have anybody join our group over there. Okay, good. Yeah, it's definitely what I did. I mean, I know I shared the when I toured Cartusia's uh, factory and all the the pictures with Francesca and. And then the trip. So that was a lot of fun. And what again yeah. is the group name to search? It's called, it's called Beauty with Italian Soul. Beauty with Italian Soul, everybody on Facebook to mm-hmm. join her private uh, group. Definitely a lot of fun in that one. And, uh, you know, I just FYI, you know, I buy, <laughs> I buy these products, not only for myself, but they make wonderful, wonderful gifts year round. And now, especially for the holidays. So I can't, can't not express it enough, really do something different this year and send something beautiful and Italian and affordable to mm-hmm. you know, your friends, loved ones and so forth. And I'll have the links in the show notes for everything. Uh, along with, of course, my affiliate link. So please, you know, use that. And, uh, and by the way, the, the shipping is fabulous and the packaging is so much fun. Mm-hmm. So the whole brand from beginning to receiving the actual product itself and then using it, it's really top class, everybody. So, you know, I cannot express that enough. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for, for lighting us up on, uh, on Italy for the day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Marla, thanks for all your support and, and thanks for having me on the show. It's always great talking to you. I really find your whole approach very inspiring and love watching all your channels as well. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate that. All right. Very good. So until next week, as you work and live, always, always, as you are hearing here, follow your joy because success leaves clues in the, in the way of intuition, in the way of joy. So pay attention. (laughs) All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening in. You can find more entrepreneurial stories and resources at MarlaDiane.com. And while you're there, enjoy my three free downloads. 
to up-level your business and your life. How about you take a screenshot of this episode and tag me on Instagram by sharing your highlights of what you learned today. I'd love to connect there with you. Until next episode, take care.